Live from the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Splunk.com 2015. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Rick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas with Splunk.conference. Dot .conf 2015, our fourth year covering Splunk's uh, major uh, end user event, uh, developer event, whatever you want to call it, it's their big show. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, here with my co-host Jeff Frick, the general manager of theCUBE. Our next guest is Andre Peach, product owner and manager at Otto Group, Otto, big retailer, huge conglomerate in Germany. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Um, so huge company, so a lot of data. I'm imagining yeah. the data must be massive. It a lot is of massive. different channels. Yeah. Give us a quick overview of what's going on in the back end. What's, mm -hmm. I mean, Splunk is great for getting data from all different places, so it is. you're like a great use case. Uh, we have a great use case, yeah, but um, I have to tell you that our Splunk installation is not that huge. Our, uh, business, uh, um, our business intelligence installation is uh, much, much larger than that. Uh, about six petabyte of, of, of data is stored in there. Our Splunk installation is uh, kind of small if I compare to the other guys around here, um, but there are a lot of uh, stuff in there. We have um, about uh, 63 different software systems running in the background, and all of them have to be uh, watched and have to be uh, yeah, monitored, and uh, so we connect it to all of them, and all of the data goes through uh, our Splunk installation. So the auto group has 53,000 employees, 123 yeah. different kind of subsidiaries or groups. Yeah. Three segments, multi-channel retail, financial yeah. services, services own in 20 countries. Mm -hmm. So very, very disparate data. Yes, um, but uh, the back end uh, consists of only the retail part of that company. And uh, not everything, but um, I think about uh, 20 different uh, subsidiaries um, are connected to the back end of the auto. Of auto and uh, let their data be processed by it. So retail obviously is hot because you want real-time information, you've got mobile point of sale. It is, And also yeah, yeah. predictive analytics for using collective intelligence to provide yeah. the right yeah. kind yeah. of recommendations. It is, in yeah. and around. I mean, so it's changing significantly. What are you seeing? It is changing, yeah, but um, we uh, set up two different installations of Splunk, two different instances of Splunk, and uh, each one of them is specialized on what they are doing. Uh, one instance is my instance, uh, that is on the back end, and uh, processes all the data. Uh, the other instance is on the front end, uh, uh, looking on the shop and what the mobile devices, the mobile users do and so on. So, but I can't tell you much about that because this is not my domain. What about digital infrastructure? Because digital transformation oh, is yeah. the big buzzword. Oh my God, yeah. So. <laughs> and we are in the middle of the big digital so, transformation because what? Um, we come originally from a catalog, paper catalog uh, uh, kind of company. Um, uh, we started in 1949 mm -hmm. and had a paper catalog. It was nice. Printed pictures and uh, glued into onto paper, bound together. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, in, I think, 1995, they started to uh, put the catalog into the internet. On the first internet, on the first website, it was hilarious. Not hilarious, oh sorry, that's the wrong word, I think. <laughs> um, it was great. Um, they, <laughs> but they only, but, but it was not, nothing like the shopping experience you have today. Right. It was only the printed catalog online. Right. And, uh, but the transformation to a digital company uh, happened in the last years, yes. What should retailers expect for mobile and IoT? Because oh. that's changing the data too, because now it's not just point of sale machines, mm. Mm. You have now mobile devices that mm. could tie to a back-end catalog. Mm. You have people are doing price comparisons. So what are the tricks of the trade for the new retail? What are some of the technology things that are happening and what should retailers expect mm. around the user modeling around mm. mobile and IoT? Yeah, as a retailer you have to be, uh, especially in the future, you have to be where the customers are. Uh, the customers in earlier days uh, depend were depending on the, on the catalog and all the trends and so on, we're coming to the catalog, to their home, and um, nowadays uh, the customer looks for what he's interested in. He doesn't uh, get a trend uh, for one year on the basic catalog that was huge, humongous, um, but they went, go through the internet, uh, go what they're interested in, and as a, as a retailer, you have to get them where they are. You have to 
um, you have to have them interested in what they need, uh, what they what they are looking for and so on. And that that will be the huge change in the future. So data security is big exposure in digital world. Yeah. How can companies keep up with being fully secure? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> because How do you guys security. look at it? Oh my god, uh, we have a whole team uh, of security guys uh, behind the, behind the uh, but you're behind not using Splunk for any security? No, no, no. We don't use Splunk for, for security. We only use it for uh, business stuff, uh, to monitor the background. So I want to follow up on, on John's earlier question about kind of the evolution of retail, because it's, mm. it's interesting, right? You had, you had uh, on the ground retail, mm. then you had online retail. Yeah. But now, one would probably argue the sophistication in tracking mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. people go, empty carts, mm -hmm. what they blend is, is more sophisticated on the online experience yeah. than on the mobile experience. But it sounds like now that's going to shift back into the store, where now there's technologies in terms of where you're moving through the store, how long do you stand in front of an aisle, mm -hmm. where are you looking, so there's, they're starting to do more kind of geolocation and, and uh, behavior monitoring inside the store, which more kind of mimics some of the things that they would track on the online experience. You guys seeing any you of those? Think so? um, I think they see it on some of the subsidiaries. Uh, they have point of sales um, and stores and so on, but auto in itself and its core is, a, is was always a, a, um, a multi-channel uh, retailer with, um, with phone support or online, or okay. online business. So, um, uh, but as you said, um, this behavior can be transferred to the online customer as well. Um, Ge geolocation uh, is also a big, uh, a big part of uh, how, how to know what a customer needs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. So talk about the DevOps component around, mm -hmm. uh, if any, you guys are doing in the back end. Obviously, in Germany, data's big, right? So we know about data's Germany. Big. That is. Um, how are you handling the ops side of the data? Is there any nuances going on with Splunk and your team? Uh, what do you mean by ops side? I'm not that well, familiar with the... Well, the operation side of, the, the, yeah. of getting the data. The Splunking data, okay. and then yeah. implementing Splunk, you're dealing yeah. with a lot of different data. In some cases, it is. outside Germany, inside Germany, that's where mm -hmm. your headquarters is. Mm -hmm. Policy, compliance. Oh my God, yeah. Uh, what are some of the things that you're, that you're challenged with that creates opportunity? Mm -hmm. uh, the most challenges are um, the information that uh, rushes through the system. Uh, you have to watch out what goes through, you have to um, carefully um, not monitor the credit card information. <laughs> you have to you have to mask them. You have to uh, hash them. Whatever to not that get data into the uh, typical stream of, of data. Um, so you have to get um, very. Uh, you have to uh, keep up. Uh, get up your fences uh, around these this stuff to uh, to not be in the position to get um, the the attorneys yeah. on your back uh, for <laughs> for having the customer yeah. data uh, floating around through the company. Yeah. <laughs> so give us a, a, a day in the life of your, of your work. Um, through a, a month or a week, a snapshot of what's it like, what are you doing, how you, what, 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 are, you do, what are you doing? I mean, it's just mm. blunking stuff, I mean, mm. like, it's mm. like magic, right? Almost like, it is, or it is. just take us through how you, what you do, what data mm. you touch, what you do, the value you're creating, mm. and, and getting out of the Splunk system. Yeah, uh, the way we, we use Splunk is um, that, because of these many software systems we have, um, I can't know each and every bit of data in the company. So what we are trying to do is um, enable our users to use Splunk. Um, so we have some kind of a crash course, two hours, and so our time of, our time, of time, time to value is about two hours. They get a crash course and they can analyze their data. They know what is in their systems. So they are the best uh, people who can analyze the data and get the value out of the data. I'm only there to provide and the And who platform. are these people? These are the buyers, the merchants? The no, no, no. Um, these are the, the um, support people for the different software products we okay. use at, uh, at Auto. Okay, in the, the software product, okay. Yeah. So uh, we teach them how to use Splunk. Use it like a, like a search engine, like Google. Uh, can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, use it like Google. Uh, make your dashboard out of the, out of the results. And uh, sometimes in a team of, of people who attend or who support the software, um, you have this one guy, this one guy who, who programs, who uh, helps their colleagues to get their computers up and running. And we, we pick that guy, teach him a little more, uh, maybe put him on, on the Splunk uh, certification course or something like that. And he, is, um, and he uh, gives this information, this knowledge to his colleagues. And so they are able to use, um, to squeeze out the maximum out of the data um, they have. 
Yeah. And is that a formal role, or that's just kind of the informal guy that you know everybody goes to Yeah, for it's the informal guy, yeah. We, uh, we, put a, we put a hat on him saying, uh, this blunt guy, <laughs> and uh, so um, he's the, then the official guy. Yeah. No, uh, but um, these people are, are, the, are the core of uh, what we are doing, uh, because without them, nobody would know anything about what is happening in the company. Right, um, right. Because I can't know the software or the details of each and every of the 63 different software systems. So that's, that is even, it, that's impossible. Yeah. So Share with the folks that are watching what the vibe is like here at the show. What's your take um, here at Splunk Conference this year? The conference is awesome. It's my first time, I have to say. Um, so um, I'm a little excited and a little shocked, <laughs> but I won't <laughs> tell about that. Um, the vibe is really good. Uh, you, have a, you have some feeling of home, of uh, of familiarity um, throughout the people, and that's really, really nice. Um, we, we as Otto, um, are treated as uh, as a valued customer. That's also uh, very, very nice to feel and very nice to, to get. Um, I was I arrived at Friday, um, so I attended university for three days to get uh, some some more uh, certification. Um, uh, it is necessary nowadays. So, um, did you yeah. hit the pool at least? Uh, I had no <laughs> chance. Uh, yesterday evening I was at, at a party. It was really good. Have you tried the, the Oculus Rift? No, I, the line, was, the line, too line long. was very long. Oh, it was? Oh, it was great. I had a chance too, but um, I get a little dizzy after a while, but um, that was really great, yeah. yeah. Or, the, or the other thing uh, with, the, with the silent disco. The silent disco. Yeah. I did do with the silent the, disco. Yeah, that that was, was I'd never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get out there. I would have yeah. fell down. Well, we really appreciate you coming on, Andre, help, helping us get the data uh, out, of, out of your uh, out of your perspective, thank you for sharing. Thank you for giving me the chance. Um, yeah. And we appreciate really appreciate it. it, thank you very much. Thank this is theCUBE, live here at Splunk.conf 2015. We'll be back with more after this short break.